But then uh, these past couple of hands were just huge hands for Joe uh, that's there. It. Yeah, just two hands and it comes apart. You know, that's 40 big blind poker. That's how that's how it happens. So um, with the ace jack there, uh, you guys both agree that that's standard on 23 big blinds on the button there? Uh, you can make some cases for oh, yeah. maybe calling or maybe three betting and then calling a shove. Um, but I think that it's very reasonable just be all in there, especially Joe's style. The way he's played the rest of this final table makes a lot of sense to just kind of try to gobble up those chips, get a lot of folds, and if you get called, hopefully flip and get there. Um, you're just going to get yeah, folds with, so with often. How light Zach's yeah. been, especially, I think I think it's a pretty clear shove for Joe. I think it was uh, interesting that Eric, you know, quickly told Joe, "Hey, you know, I had Queen Ten, and you know, I got there on the flop." And you see, Joe is very frustrated. Uh, I think not because he, you know, maybe got there or folded, but maybe because he didn't shove pre, uh, where he would have won the pot. Very different game if he shoves pre and Eric folds. There's no way that he's I don't know if yeah, Eric could fold there. Oh, I think Eric's definitely folding. After, I mean, he, at that yeah, point, like it's a spot where he technically surprise. can't fold, but he probably oh, he was definitely. Anyway. I think he would definitely fold, though. He's going to have to call it off with, with, with Queen-10 like that. That does not seem like uh, something he would do there. Yeah, sometimes when you're playing live, you don't know the exact amount, so you're just like, I want to four bet this guy. Yeah. It's kind of hard to back check your math and see if that's actually an option. But then once you actually do commit those chips and then you're facing the all-in, you, you do the math then at least, right? Well, I mean, I, I would. I yeah, I would. would. I'm not sure. You know, again, Eric is a self-proclaimed non-professional. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't – maybe he wouldn't uh, commit those chips in that spot. I, Either I way, a great, great like, showing he's, for, he's uh, for Joe. Joe still played really well, made uh, basically zero mistakes. Yep, agreed. Always impressed to see Joe play. So now that we're down to three players, every single player at this table is guaranteed $321,000 uh, and change. The three-handed, we're going to see everyone is... Uh, Posting blinds two thirds of the time, so the action is going to speed up a little bit here. Well, especially with Eric in there. Now that Eric has some chips, I think that there's no chance that you don't see a lot of action here. Eric, Eric has always pushed the action in this final table. Zach comes along for the ride. Action on Justin in the big blind. So Zach just calling pre instead of three betting. Yeah, I'd like to see a three bet with this type of hand. I mean, again, there's merit to calling, but I think with Eric opening as wide as he has been, it, it just you're just going to get so many folds. Yeah. I agree. Like situations like this where, you know, you get a hand like king four to fold pre, like you see here how, you know, even though he flopped second pair, he couldn't even continue on this board. Yeah, playing playing out of position, even against like somewhat weak ranges post flop, you are going to be bleeding a lot of equity just by virtue of being out of position and, you know, not having good visibility on boards like that. So yeah, three betting pre makes a lot of sense there. We see the new uh, standings, a couple of 50 big wine stacks and Zach with about 90 big wines. Yeah, nice Eric, for him, but it is uh, Eric now over uh, ten needs. million in in chips, as we can see. And Eric, the only non-American player who was at this final table, he's still left left in here. We have no local players left. Justin Zaki is from the Tampa area in Florida, and Zach living in State College. I guess that's kind of local. Yeah, I was going to say Zach's the closest to local. local. He's here a lot. He's a familiar face to Borgata with his last WPT run. Zach, of course, getting second in the uh, Borgata Poker Open back in 2016, a year and a half ago. Looking to better that finish today and in good shape to do so. Now, is Eric the first player that's over $10 million besides Zach? Joe never eclipsed that mark, I don't I believe think. so. Yeah. yeah. 37 million chips in play. Average chip stack just over 12 and a half. 
That's going to raise that to 450000 to Glen Oak. A6 offsuit, a pretty tough hand to play out of the small blind here. Looks like, like Zach is going to give it a shot. Now he's been Justin. itching to make a move for a while here, I think. He knows how wide Zach is opening, and he just hasn't really had spots to punish him. But Zach has a pretty good hand to call with here, especially with these deep stacks. Yeah, Justin, who's been playing pretty straightforward, now takes the A6 offsuit, three bets out of the small blind. Would you still call, even though uh, Justin's playing a little on the tighter side? I mean, with the stacks being this deep, I think it's a pretty clear call with position. I mean, you, you have good price, your hand flops well. Even if Justin does have a fairly strong range, I think you'll be able to realize your well the flop. The stacks are shallower, it's it's tougher. But with these stacks sure. being so deep, I, sure. I, I really don't like this hand selection for Justin. Every time he gets called pre, he's just going to be in an impossible spot post-flop, as we're seeing here. Yeah, A6 is... Uh, quite a bit worse in terms of playability than ace five for example yeah and the, pretty much any random suited hand is going to be better than ace six offsuit i'd rather three bet with like seven four suited here than ace six offsuit i think of course the benefit of ace six offsuit is, is that it blocks the value goes up but with the stacks being this deep you, you greatly want to prefer playability over blockers right he does improve his equity on this five with the straight draw now pretty good card for him yeah he continues to check I would kind of like to see a small bet from Zach on the flop, actually. But, I mean, I guess I guess his hand's a reasonable check. The 10 kind of covers a lot of the uh, the bad turns for him, and then the spades are pretty nice for him as well. He is going to bet the turn. Now, Justin with 25% equity is pretty uh, pretty reasonable call here. I, I, I don't know if you can call here. I, if I were Justin, I, I, would, I would either raise or fold. I would probably lean towards raising. I think, I think there's a spot you could go for the check check raise and try to try to put a big move on him. It certainly uh, would be a pretty cool line. I don't know what Zach would be doing with this hand. Justin just gonna fold. I, I think I'd yeah, rather I mean, see like a bet from him on the turn than a check fold. Like if you're planning on check I, folding, I, I would just bet. I, I agree with that. However, I I I I don't know. I think the check raising is is the best option. It's okay. So so the benefits really the benefits of bet of, of uh, checking there. Interact with was uh, low straight cards a lot better than Justin's range. So for Justin to check twice and then raise the turn, what does what does he have like a set? Like he wouldn't he wouldn't play an overpair that way. Right. So so you're essentially repping a set or two pair. Um, yeah, and you have like no two pairs because you three bet free. Well, you yeah. you have a uh, seven eight suited. Five, yeah, that's five, certainly seven possible. Suited. The way Justin's been playing, I don't think he's going to be perceived to have very many two pairs in that right. spot. I think I think his his value range for check check raising would be something with just like a couple of sets. So di diff difficult spot for him, but that kind of illustrates why you don't want to choose a six offsuit as your three back. When you do get called, your post flop decisions are just going to be so tough all the time. It's it's really hard to navigate out of position a three bet pot with a hand like that. Eric really varying his small bond strategy. We saw limping, we saw raising, we're seeing more limping now. Down. Showing the ace. Justin Zaki getting some shout outs in our YouTube chat. Lots of fans of all these players. These guys definitely all know their way around a uh, live tournament. All right, I've got a question for you, Brian. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Comes from our YouTube. Sure. Comes from our YouTube chat. I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but let's do the best we can with it. What are the odds of picking three random cards, for example, six, seven, eight, and having one of them hitting the flop versus not hitting the flop? I don't know the relevance of this question, but let's see what you can do with this one. 
I want I want to say it's close to like. So you're saying I, I get to pick three cards out of the deck and you're gonna deal a flop and then the odds of just one any of those three hitting on the flop. Yes. Right? Yes. I think it's actually close to like a coin flip. Okay. So you're saying it's that's, roughly that's my, roughly that's my, roughly fifty uh, percent. I haven't fact checked that or anything. Roughly fifty percent. I, I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay. Around fifty percent. I, I seem to recall something about guys doing a betting game with that, where it's like I let the guy pick three cards and then you know. We'll bet on whether one of those hits on the flop. Yeah, there is a, there is a game somewhat uh, somewhat like that. Who was it who asked that in the chat? It was a, I believe it was a, Chris, Chris H. Chris H. Brian, Chris H. Said he he'll book your action. <laughs> he he'll give you three cards and he'll deal out a flop. And if you pair, you win. I'm going to assume that he knows the odds <laughs> better than I. And I will pass. <laughs> There's another game where you, uh, there's you, you 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 it's you you allow the player, they get all the face cards and you get the rest of the deck and when the flop comes out all face cards you lose, and you I think you lay you lay a good price and, it sounds like a good price but it's actually not or I don't know. I all sorts of hustles like that games, you can pull on yeah. people at the table if they don't know their odds. Well, how about how about this one? How how what how about if you're holding you know two cards in your hand? What are the odds you flop a pair? On the flop, do you know what that is? Off the top of my head, I, I feel like I should. Oh, Some, I'm really, something I'm, around one in three. I, be, I believe that's what it is. Yeah. Is this including the probability that you started with a pocket pair? No. Okay. No, I don't. I don't believe. So yeah, so. two unpaired cards, odds of flopping a pair. So, sounds like one in three or yeah, thereabouts. It's, it's it's about one in three. Three of diamonds. So what are the odds that one of these two players turned a pair? If they had no pair? No, well, they they have no pair. Well, they have no pair. There's if they each have six cards, the odds are roughly <laughs> they each have two thirteen percent or so. They uh, have. Well, they have six cards to pair. So if so, Justin has king ten. There's three tens left and three okay. kings left. Right, right. So that gives him six cards okay. that could come out that would pair him. Right. Um, so that would be roughly about thirteen and a half percent, I think, uh, just on the turn. Per player. Per player, yes. Got providing it. they don't have the same cards. Well, they don't have the same cards, and Justin trying to turn his king high into a bluff here represents some sort of uh, straight. Or... Yeah, it's definitely a board where he's going to have a lot more of this than uh, Eric will. Yeah, perfect. King high gets a side of fold. It's exactly the outcome Justin was looking for there. Eric's showing a lot of cards here, but I mean, people are gonna see it in 30 minutes anyway, I guess. Some great events coming up here at the Borgata. Lots of bands and comedians on this list. If you're down here in Atlantic City, come check out some shows here. Have you seen any shows down here at the Borgata? I saw Brian Regan do some stand-up comedy ah, he's uh, a, several years ago. He's a, a long-time favorite of mine. Uh, he is my favorite stand-up comedian, and he's actually coming here this year on my birthday. Oh, uh, are you going to be here for that? That's a good question. You should. It decided. sounds like you should be, Kane. It sounds like that would be a fun night. Eric going to limp in blind versus blind here with the 8-7 suited. Zach will check the 9-6-0. Another question from the YouTube no chat. For anybody. What is a three bet? We have been discussing three bets and four bets a lot, but we don't. We did not take the time to explain it. Uh, some players, some people watching, may not be as familiar with some of these terms. Who'd like to tackle that one? Well, the first raise before the flop would be a two bet, but nobody actually calls it that. So if somebody raises and then you re-raise, that's a three bet. Okay, so so yeah, I think that this term comes from traditionally from limit poker, where the forced right. big blind is considered the first bet, uh, and then any raise after that is a two bet, and then just like Brian said, any additional raise would be a three bet, four bet, five bet, etc. When you start saying raise, re raise, re re raise, re 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 raise, it gets very confusing quickly. So it's much easier to just simply number the bets. Okay.
Zach with queen two, blind versus flying, going to come in for the limp. Comes in for the one bet. <laughs> now Justin in the big blind with ace 10, a strong hand. We'll see if he two bets. I'd be surprised if he didn't. There he goes. He makes it 700. That should be good enough to win this pot. Justin and Eric, pretty similar stacks here. Zach still with a commanding chip lead. Yeah, Zach's got to like his spot here. And... Eric and Justin have made it to the final three in very, very different ways. I mean, uh, Justin has been very deliberate, really picked his spots. I think we've seen him three-bet bluff one hand with that A6 offsuit. Eric, on the other hand, we've seen him three-bet the eight, uh, the six-three, was it? Six-three offsuit. We've seen him three-bet yep. um, several very, very speculative hands, make very big plays. So uh, it just goes to show you that different styles uh, can – be successful in this game. I think Again, one of the certainly. most interesting stories of this final table is that Zach is now three-handed, still with a fairly commanding chip lead, and he only has one million more chips than he started the final table with. That just really emphasizes just how big of a lead he had coming in. But he's still doing pretty well for himself. I mean, getting three-handed with the same stack, you know, that's worth a lot of money. Absolutely. Yeah, I think overall that's a that's a good result. Absolutely. Calls a turn with a gut shot. Gets to Eric's top top here. Eric's got this one in the bag. Zach will fold the river. Eric does show the Jack of Diamonds. Good card, Eric. Eric's showing all the hands here. I only show in one card every time. I'm usually not a big fan of showing, but at you know a, a table like this where you know your opponents are probably going to get to see your cards in 30 minutes anyway, I don't think it's as big of a deal. Uh, one of the yeah, I agreed. One of the last times I made a final table here, uh, we we were I think we we're playing four-handed, and everyone kind of said, "Hey, we're going to see the cards in 30 minutes anyway. Do you want to just you know after the hands over, if people want to know, just you know be honest and." Everyone's like, yeah, sure, who cares? And we were just kind of telling and uh, showing hands after each hand because it, it didn't matter. There was not a big difference between that, you know, that delay. So we kind of took the uh, weight out of it. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely cool as long as everyone agrees. I think if, if uh, you know, one pretty, person isn't doing it, then you're probably it getting it. a pretty friendly, friendly group. Yeah, for sure. A lot, a lot of guys know each other. And, you know, sometimes people, like, play the show one game after every hand, even, even in spots where you're not going to be seeing it on TV 30 minutes later. Yeah. So Justin has picked up on the fact that Zach has been defending his big blind pretty wide here. He raises to 3x on the button, and Zach does defend the king-9 offsuit. Justin, though, outflopping him with middle pair. Zach's not, not in terrible shape, though. He has uh, a couple of backdoors, and he has overs. Good for 29%. Justin checks, turn card. Turn of clubs. That's a good turn card for her, for Zach. Fantastic turn card for Zach. Pretty surprised to see Justin not bet this flop. It's a hand where, again, you're not going to get a whole lot of value from worse, but you really need to protect. There's just every so, turn in the deck is quite bad for so you. So if I were Zach here with Justin having check back the flop, yeah, it Justin really narrows time. Justin's range. I would either go for a check raise or an overbet lead in this spot. I probably would opt towards overbet leading. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you have to actually fully overbet, but I definitely think like a, a large size lead is, is a great way to go here. Overbetting could be pretty cool, too. It's really, really hard for Justin to continue with much of anything, especially given that Zach uh, blocks a nine and he blocks a king of clubs. Well, here, Justin, he thinking fold. about the call and folds the a6. I, I like that fold there. It's just a yeah. uh, very, very dicey situation. Yeah, Zach has a particularly... It's big. a real tough spot for him, but that kind of emphasizes why I think he should bet the flop because his hand on the flop is quite good. It's just going to be really bad on so many different turns. Eric needs a rail. Anyone want to cheer for Eric? Oh. Hand, here. Oh. 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 Justin also doesn't have a rail. Oh. 
everyone in the audience is here for that. You can try to share the room. There's no sharing in this room. Is the audience there? I'll send you a shot for the room. Very rare. All right, here we go. Let's go my way. Eric's going to pull. Most of the rail here is cheering for Zach, as we discussed. He is from State College, Pennsylvania. Closest thing to a local. We'll get that family and friends over here. Hometown hero. Not too many of uh, Justin's friends and family made it up from the cold, into the cold, rather, from Florida. The, of course, uh, Eric coming from Montreal, Canada. This one with the Queen 10. I'm just going to limp in. Eric will check back. Jack 7. No help for either player. I was going to give Eric back to a flush draw here. You could see Justin flush catch if Eric bets this. Eric nearly turning his hand over. <laughs> yeah. He's... Could that have been, uh, you know, a, a, an inducing action by Eric there? I'm not sure. It seems to me, if anything, he was eager to show his hand, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think Justin actually did anything. Right, but Eric indicating that he had a he had a strong hand that there. That generally is a strong hand. Yeah, exactly. Would make me want to but fold. do you think he, it would make you? It, it so would make you me want to. No, it would make me want to fall. You would think he was acting yeah. legitimately. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, agreed. Three players remain. Small bet from Justin, Justin but it is enough to take it down. Yeah, it's, it's a texture that just favors him pretty heavily over the big blind, and uh, he doesn't really need to. He's always trying to do his protect his equity. He doesn't really need to bet big. He's not trying to pull out anything better. Players discussing who they'd rather play with three-handed, who they envision being here. I got to tell you, I, I mean, not having Joe here has to be pretty good for everybody. Well, I think other than, you know, if, if Zach didn't get three-handed, you know, that would be surprising. But other than that, if you told me it was Zach and any of the other two players, it would not really be surprising. They were all kind of even coming in, except for Zach's big chip lead, and they're all very good players. You know, so really anything could happen. Sure, you know, we keep saying how Joe's got the, you know, more experience, the better resume, and this and that, but it's still, they're still playing 30, 40 big blind poker. He could have easily just busted in sixth, 
and any of those other good players could have could have been here with him. Yeah, agreed. Uh, you know, it's a poker tournament. Anything can happen for sure. Well, here we're back to the limping. Back to the limps, huh? Zach limping the button with Queen 3 suited, and Eric raising up 5x. Yep, good raise by him. He's just going to take it down a lot, and I think it's way better for him to raise and check with that hand. Do you like the limping strategy? Especially with how weak Zach's been opening. Either Zach of you guys? Has all sorts of trash here. I, I don't like the limping. How about you, Brian? You like the limping from the button? Not 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 the way it's going down right now. Like I, I think there's spots where you want to have a button limp range. I think they mostly are when you're sub 20 big blinds and it's like really awkward to raise fold or raise call. I'm not really sure what exactly Zach is like structuring his limp range around in these spots because the stacks are so much deeper. I think he should just play a pure raise strategy. Yeah, I agree with that. Justin staying Justin consistent with his button sizing here. Yeah, raising the three X. I like I like Justin's three Xing more than I like Zach's limping. Yeah, I mean Justin. I think if he's stacked up, I think three Xing is a pretty reasonable strategy. And also with the frequency with which Zach has been defending his big blinds, I think that that's a a good adjustment. Yeah, certainly. You want you want to charge him more if he if he's going to try to defend his big blind a whole bunch. You want to charge him more for the privilege. That's generally the way that I. I choose my pre-flop sizing is uh, uh, mostly dependent on the uh, defend frequency of the big blinds. Of course, um, other things are taken into consideration if I'm in an earlier position. But if I'm in later position, say the small blind, the button, the cutoff, or the hijack, uh, something really important to consider when choosing between 2x or 3x, for example, or 3.5x even, is how frequently your opponent defends a big blind. Yeah, agreed, definitely. I mean, if, if your opponent's letting you get away with minimum raises, that's great, but, you know, the, the more your opponent defends, the bigger you want to make it. Yeah, that doesn't happen nearly as much as it did three or four years ago. No, people are pretty aware now that you're supposed to just defend really wide against small raises, so bigger raises are sort of coming back in vogue. For a while there, min raise. Yeah. Turn is four plus. Turn four. Zach a gutter here. Zach does have a gutter. Justin with 91% equity. All he has is a weak third pair. So Justin has done this a number of times where he's had kind of marginal uh, third pair type hands. He's, he's contemplating a call and he brings his chips out like he's about to call and then ends up folding. I wonder if he ever does end up making the call, if that's kind of a tell. That he has something very good? That he has, I know, that he has something very marginal. If he had actually made the call there after contemplating and playing with his chips. Oh, I see what you're saying. Whenever I've seen Justin have something very strong, he doesn't take that action when he continues in the hand. I'm a little surprised to see him just fold third pair like that. Yeah, three-handed, you have to be a lot more willing to get yeah. stubborn with your marginal hands. Yeah. Now, is, is it at 
all a consideration in, in that spot or in a similar spots, thinking about ICM, thinking you want Eric to get involved with Zach instead? I mean, sure, but it's oh, a small like, pot. No, definitely, but in the smaller pots, you can't give up too many of them. I mean, they're not going to really threaten your your entire stack that often. And if you give up too many of them, you're kind of going to just dwindle into third place by default. So there's a fine line you have to take there. You can't take the ICM logic to the extreme or else you'll just get uh, just crushed in all these small pots. So for those of you watching on YouTube and, and Facebook, uh, go ahead and weigh in. If you didn't know that Zach and Justin were professional poker players and that Eric was a, a, in real estate, just looking at these people, what do you think they would do for a, for a living? This always. is always a fun one. I always like this game. We get some good answers on this one. You can tweet at us also, guys. Uh, you can use the hashtag... BWPO or at Borgata Poker. Just add us at Borgata Poker. Now, oh, is, is Justin wearing a Tampa Lightning jacket? Is that what that is? I'm not a big hockey guy, so. I think it might Seems be. Seems likely. He, yeah. I mean, he's from Florida. And I know he's a big, yeah. he's a big Florida sports fan in general. Yep. So not quite a jersey, but close. Maybe think we overlooked that on our jersey radar earlier. So what is going on here? Well, that's Justin Betts and Eric raises him with King Three. Yeah, that doesn't look like a valid raise size either. No, he bet. He bet. Uh, it's to call six fifty. Yeah, so. he, he bet. Oh, okay. He, he bet, bet four fifty. Gotcha. Or yeah, four fifty. Wow. And the Eric aggressive action takes it down for Eric here. Yeah, Justin is uh, definitely letting himself get pushed around a lot in these smaller pots. I mean, it's, it's obviously easy to say, you know, when we're in the booth, like, oh, you got to call with that gut shot. You got to call with that third pair. A lot harder to actually do in game. Yeah, these guys have been watching Justin play this final table, and they know that he is uh, prone to playing cautiously, so they're taking advantage of that. I think one that one thing that makes it tough to play against Eric, too, is that his aggression is just really hard to pin down. He, it really comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. It comes pre-flop, it comes flops, turns, rivers. You don't know if he's going to do betting or raising. A lot of players, they bet a lot as bluffs, but they don't raise as bluffs. And Eric does a little bit of everything, so it's really tough for these guys to narrow him down. Yeah, that's a good point. Just a min raise here from Eric. So Eric pretty much has a lock on this one. I guess a deuce or an ace would give Zach a chop here. And there's a three. Pretty bad card for Zach. His hand looks good now, but it is not. Eric takes down another one. We have any responses over there? Uh, I got a yep, couple good there. ones rolling in here. Let's see. Zach would be a video game professional. I think I think we're looking for what they, uh, you know, I think I think that that's Zach's dream job right there. <laughs> 
Justin. Justin looks like he. I have. Would work at a gas station. I also have. Would be a fisherman. Huh. I don't know if I see fisherman. Out in Florida. He, he could, Out in Florida, he could, he could, he could be. Yeah. Fishing. Yeah. Yeah. I have Eric. Eric apparently would be in sales because I have Eric. We would sell insurance, or Eric would be an art dealer. Oh, I like, I like the, the art, art dealer. dealer. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that one's perfect. Justin getting a lot of a lot of uh, car salesmen now. Several people agreeing <laughs> that he's that he would be a car salesman. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I could see car salesman or fisherman. I don't know about fisherman. <laughs> Dustin looks like a poker player to me through and through, but yeah, I've known him for years, so I guess it's hard for me to, to see him any other way. Justin Calling the big ball in there with the queen two suited, pretty standard. He did not look very happy about making the call, but... I guess that's going to be true of a lot of his hands, so not giving away too much info there. Nice flop for Justin and Eric here. Top pair, middle pair, both with a backdoor flush draw. Eric going to bet the flop. Very small, very small. Justin with the call. So Justin in the lead here by a pretty big margin. Ace, no help for anybody. And both players with strong enough hands here that you don't really expect either of them to be turning it into a bluff. So, oh, with Eric, you never know. Yeah, I expect Eric will be checking here. Eric can always surprise Wow. Me. There it is. 900,000 chip bet by Eric here. Yeah, nice, a nice uh, read by him. I mean, turning his hand into a bluff, even though it's one of the better showdown hands he's going to have here. But I'm not sure Justin's going to give up that easily. Yeah, I can't imagine Justin would be folding here on the turn. And Eric did bet the flop into multiple people, but he also chose a very small sizing, so it's certainly possible for him to have an ace in his hand. It's not out of the question by any means. Justin does make the call. And to the river, it's a seven. So Justin will win this pot unless Eric manages to bluff him here on the river. Justin with the check. Oh, it goes check, check. Back. Justin will win. Nice call by him on the turn. So yeah, I think I yeah, think Justin's Eric was uh, on the turn. I think Eric was betting to protect his hand on the turn. Maybe. I guess so. I mean if Justin's calling with that hand on the turn, then bluffing makes no sense, so I guess protection would be the next option, but for that sizing it doesn't really make sense for protection either. Yeah, I, I don't think that the turn bet made a whole lot of sense uh, from Eric's perspective. Nice spot for Justin though. New standings, and uh, yeah, pretty much anyone's game. We're quite close. Not going to fold his button for once. He hasn't been doing a whole lot of that. No, he really hasn't. Mixing in those limps, mixing in some raises. Queen three offsuit, a pretty bad one, though. Justin going to limp the jack nine here. The Derek just checking the king nine out of the big. Would you guys have been looking to raise there? 
Uh, yeah, pretty pretty much always, I think. Pretty good flops for both. If the stacks are a bit shallower, and Justin has a realistic limp jam option, then you can start checking King Nine. But I think it's, it's this stack that should be checking it pretty. Often. So both players with gut shot. Eric does have the better of it. He also has a better backdoor flush draw than Justin. Although if, if Justin does hit an eight, he's gonna yeah, be in an a great eight, spot. Yeah, an eight gives Justin then the, a better straight though. So. See how he decides to proceed here. Might be reaching out a raise. I like this play from Justin here. Raising up to 750,000. Yeah, I, like I think you should go a little bigger, though. I think the sizing is just too easy to get called. I think it's pretty tough. Justin has not really run a lot of big bluffs. And if we're if I'm Eric, it's just not an amazing situation. Well, that's an interesting card because Eric now picks up a, a better straight draw. Yep. Yeah, both, both players basically with open-ended. Eric technically has a double gut shot. Justin with an actual open-ended. And I would expect Justin to continue to fire her on this turn. Yeah, once he's taken the check raise line, I think he probably will. But he might have to follow through on the river because both players are going to have a lot of draws here and Eric does have position. 850, that's a pretty small bet. It is. Eric quickly calls. Big pop brewing here. River card River is, is a, a king. king. Justin. Great card for Justin. He picks up his straight. Eric with top pair now. Making his straight and let's see what he chooses to bet here. Yeah, he's got to pick the sizing right here because if, if he goes too big, he might lose his customer. But if he goes too small, he might miss out on some value. So interesting spot. He's going big. 2.25 million. Yeah, and a lot of draws missed on this board, so Eric might be tempted to call. I mean, he did river a pretty decent hand. Well, Eric Eric has he has a diamond in his hand, um, which blocks the possible flush draws that Justin could have had. And he does make the call, and he'll get the bad news. I was going to say, but he also has a 9 in his hand, which blocks Justin's ability to have Jack 9 and 8 9. Eric. Yeah, it seems like a pretty reasonable bluff catcher for Eric, especially because the, he does block a king, but he only block, I mean, he does block a diamond, but he only blocks the king of diamonds, which is, uh, you know, Justin's not really bluffing anymore on the river if, if he has a king of diamonds. Tough pot for Eric, who lost over 33% of his stack. Yeah, With that him there, and Justin will swap positions. Eric will now be the short stack. Justin taking an aggressive line in that spot, and it worked out for him. But it's questionable as to how it would have worked out for him on different runouts. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of runouts there where it, it blows up in his face. But he yeah, got I mean, good I, ones I think the interesting thing about that hand is that all these chips are going in the pot on the flop and the turn, and nobody had a hand. You have Jack High versus King High, just two draws, and it would have been those hands are the most interesting for me when everybody misses. You know who gives up, yep. who continues. If that river is just yeah, a brick, is a friend in that type. exactly. But it didn't help Eric. Justin Zaki from Florida, very experienced live player. Yeah, I've known both of these guys for ages. I met Zach in uh, 2009 for the first time, I think, and Justin in 2011. Yeah, Zach played a tremendous amount back in the day online. Yeah, he was he was ranked really high online before Black Friday. Did Justin play online or no? I believe he, he does a little some. bit. I yeah. He played on Stars and Phil, but he played on like UB a lot. And what was Zach's name on Stars? Uh, Zach is Hustler Hustle. Rune. That was the name he is known by the most. 
I believe that's still his Twitter handle or something close to it. And Mike, were you Gags pre-Black Friday? I was, yeah, Gags30. Yeah, I, I pretty much only played with you tournament guys on Sundays. I would come donate. On yeah, we Sundays didn't play a lot before Black Friday. Stick mostly to the uh, to the cash games. I we think played. cash players have a better time going into tournaments than the other way around, generally speaking. Me and Kane have played a lot recently on Borgata Poker. Familiar stomping grounds here in the state of New Jersey. That's right. You guys have legal online poker there. We do. It's great, great stuff. A lot of well, biggest thing. You know, we've been what there's been really a lot of is uh, satellites to all these land-based events here at Borgata. Those have been very popular. Players winning their buy-ins to not only this tournament but also a lot of the opening events, the Almighty Stack, the $600 opening event. That's always a large prize pool here. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe maybe that's part of why the fields here are getting so big. I think it definitely doesn't hurt. A lot, of, a lot of players winning their buy-ins online is, is, is definitely become a common theme here. Yeah, it's good to see. I hope that more states follow their lead in uh, legalizing online poker and trying to make money off it. See Zach's home state of Pennsylvania coming up soon. Hopefully, Yeah, they've joined the club recently, Yeah, right? hopefully later this year. A lot of table talk between the two of them. Yeah, these guys are all pretty friendly. I we're going at it a little bit now. I'm not sure how well you can hear them. Justin with top pair and a straight draw. Eric with ace high and a gut shot. A bad gut shot. Eric keeping the show one game alive. He really is. Nearly every hand. Playing his own personal show one game. See the stacks. Uh, Eric is losing ground. Justin is really gaining. He's uh, about even with Zach now. 